Okay, in this section, we're going to look at solving equations by adding or subtracting. Two things you need to know, equation. An equation is two quantities, uh, two, it's two quantities that are equal. A solution is the, basically the value that makes that equation true. For instance, if I have 2x minus, uh, let's say plus 1 equals 5, that's an equation. Now, if I have, were to look for a solution, if I take 2x plus 1 equals 5, my solution would be x equals 2. So x equals 2. Now, the way I know that is if I were to plug that back in, 2 times 2 is 4. If I add 1, then that's 5. That 2 right there made this equation true. All right, now we're going to try these other ones, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to try uh, this right here. We're going to use addition. And in this first one, it's x minus 10. Well, since I'm subtracting 10, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And what you end up getting is that negative 10 and that positive 10 cancel out. They're opposites. So you bring your x down, bring down your equal sign, and you get 4 plus 10, which is 14. Okay? Now, I could go back and double check it, plug in 14, because that's what x is, minus 10 equals 4. And 14 minus 10 is 4, and 4 equals 4, so it checks out. Now, in this one right here, on b, 2 fifths equals m minus 1 fifth. Well, since I'm subtracting the 1 fifth, what I'm going to do to both sides is I'm going to add the 1 fifth. So I'm doing the opposite. So add the 1 fifth. Now, when I do that, these two cancel out. You bring down your m. And remember, uh, here's a fraction. They both have a common denominator of 5. So you only have to add the numerator. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So I have 3 fifths. Now, you're going to try. So give yourself a minute. I want you to try number 1, 2, and 3 here. Uh, remember, on number 1, it's a minus 3.2, so you're going to add 3.2 to both sides. So you're going to add 3.2 plus 3.2. These are gone. You're left with the n equals, and when you line this up, you get 8.8. .8. Now, on number 2, notice it's negative 6 equals k minus 6, where you're going to add the 6 to both sides, and these two cancel out. You bring down your k, and if you notice, negative 6 plus 6 is 0, and that's okay. It's okay to have 0. I'm going to let you do number 3 by yourself. Now, in this other section, solving equations by using subtraction. Notice that it's x plus 7. Well, if I have x plus 7 equals 9, I'm going to subtract because I'm going to undo the adding 7. So when I subtract 7, what that allows me to do is cancel out this side. I bring down my x, bring down my equal sign, and 9 minus 7 is positive 2. Now, if I were to go plug that back in right there, I get 2 plus 7 equals 9, and that is true. Now, on B, it's R plus 0.04. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it equals R plus 0.4. I'm now going to subtract 0.4 from both sides. These cancel out. I'm going to bring down the R. 0.7 minus 0.4 is 0.3. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you do the next three. All right? This is supposed to be a 1, number 2, and number 3. I'm going to see if you can do those. Now, on these, it says we're solving equations by adding the opposite. That's sort of true, so adding the opposite. But it's still the same as what we've been doing. It's just they're out of place. Like this one. It's negative 8 plus b equals 2. Well, 
I'm going to get the b by itself, so I'm going to add the constant to the other side. So plus 8 plus 8. Remember, what you do to one side, you do to the other. And you, in order to move it to the other side, you have to do the opposite. So those two cancel out. You bring down the b. And 2 plus 8 is 10. Now, if I were to go back and check that, negative 8 plus 10 equals 2. Well, yes. When you combine those that side, you get 2 equals 2. Now, I'm going to let you try these two, number one and number two. It's a decimal, and the other one's a fraction, but it's already got a common denominator for you. And, of course, number three, which was hidden down at the bottom, a negative 11 plus x. Well, I'll go ahead and finish this for you. So we're going to add 11 because it's the opposite. All right, the 11s are gone. Bring down that x equals 33 minus 11, which is 22. <laughs> Now the last thing we're going to cover is an application problem. Now just try to decipher what's really being said. Like in this case, a person's maximum heart rate is the highest rate in beats per minute that the person's heart should reach. Okay, that's that first sentence. It says one method to estimate maximum heart rate is to state or rate states that your age added to your maximum heart rate is 220. So your age, it says, added to your maximum heart rate, we'll just put heart rate, is 220. <laughs> so now, all we have to do is plug in one of those. So it says, find the maximum heart rate of a 15-year-old person. Well, here's a 15-year-old, that's their age. We want to find the heart rate equals 220 Okay, <laughs> now we're going to, in this case, just like the other problems, now that we got it all set up, we're going to subtract 15 because we're going to do the opposite. We're going to cancel out those 15s. We're going to bring down the H, our heart rate, and 220 <laughs> minus 15 is 205. So therefore, the maximum heart rate for a 15-year-old is 205.